Hello friends. Today we will discuss about introduction of basic of electrical and electronics engineering. This is the first lecture in the uh, basic electrical and electronics engineering. Myself Chandrasekhar S. Patil, Sharad Institute of Technology, Polytechnic, Yadra. The subject details are the program name is Mechanical Engineering and Automobile Engineering Program. Program code EE. Course title Basic Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Semester third. Course code is 22310. Industrial Requirements. Diploma engineers are called technologists have to deal with electrical and electronics engineering principles and applications in industrial processes of different fields. So as we all know, diploma engineers, they are also called as technologists. So everyone has to understand the basic principles involved in electrical and electronics engineering to solve the real world application to solve understand the real world applications and to solve the real world problems related to electrical and electronics engineering the course outcomes are first one use principles of electric and magnetic to solve engineering problems second one is determine voltage and current in ac circuits third one connect transformers and electric motors for specific requirements. Fourth one, identify electronic components in electric circuits. Fifth one, use relevant electronic components safely. Sixth one, use electric or electronic protective devices safely. To understand the first course outcome, we have to understand the basic principles of electric and magnetic fields to solve the engineering problems. So whenever we are uh, taking up electric and magnetic circuits, we have to understand the real life problems and try to solve the problems. Determine voltage and current in AC circuits. So in the AC circuits, we have to understand what is resistance, inductance and capacitance and what is the effect of voltage and current in when uh, it passes through the AC elements, circuit elements. So third CO is transformers and electric motors. So transformer is a static device and electric motors it is a rotating device. So we have to understand both the uh, equipments so that we will be clear about how the electric and magnetic field is operating in these two equipments. Also we have to understand about electric components in electric circuits, basics and then how to use the electric, electronic components safely. Whenever we are doing any experiment or whenever we are working on electric components, how to uh, follow the safety and how to use it safely uh, is to be understood. And also we will understand about electrical or electronic protective devices. There are different types of protective devices like MCBs, circuit breakers. So all these we will understand in detail. Contents of this presentation are Introduction to Electrical and Electronics Brief about Electrical and Magnetic Circuits Unit 1 and brief about AC circuits, Unit 2, brief about transformer and single phase induction motor, Unit 3, brief about electronic components and signals, Unit 4, brief about diodes and applications, Unit 5, brief about bipolar junction transistors, Unit 6. So first of all, we will understand what is a charge. We know that matter is electrical in nature. So every matter on this earth 
consists of atom and that atom consists of protons and electrons which are the charged particles it contains particles of electricity those are protons and electrons so the positive charge on a proton is equal to the negative charge on electron if there is any matter the always the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons and whether a given uh, so because of that the charge of the particular atom is neutral during the stable conditions so number of protons and number of electrons will be equal because of that the total charge of an atom will be neutral whether a given body exhibits electricity depends upon the relative number of particles of electricity so if it is to be charged if the atom is becoming charged particle then there is difference in the number of protons or electrons comparatively if protons are more if the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons then the body is neutrally charged so as we have already understood that if the body in the body or in the atom the number of protons and number of electrons are equal then the body is neutrally charged if from a neutral body some electrons are removed there occurs a deficit of electrons in the body and consequently the body attains a positive charge so if we have the number of electrons less compared to the number of protons in an atom the effect of proton or the positive charge will increase and hence the net charge of that atom or material becomes positive charge if a neutral body is supplied with electrons there occurs an excess electrons consequently the body attains a negative charge so we have we all have to understand that if the number of electrons are more compared to the number of protons in an atom then the excess electrons act as a negative charge and the whole body becomes a negative charged particle electric current the directed flow of electrons or charge is called electric current current is also called as rate of flowing of electrons flow of electric current can be explained with this figure in this copper strip there are number of free electrons when electric pressure or voltage is applied electrons being negatively charged around the circuit the this directed flow of electrons is called electric current so whenever there are number of free electrons in the copper rod so if we are applying a voltage across that copper electrode or across that copper uh, then copper strip then what happens is the electrons tend to move towards the positive charge this directed flow of electrons is called electric current so whenever the charges are attracted towards the positive charge they tend to move towards the positive charge and the rate of flow of electrons from negative to positive electrode is called as current electric current it is known that actual direction of current is from negative terminal to the positive terminal though that uh, that part of the external circuit to a cell so always the flow of electric uh, flow of current electrons is from negative to positive through the external circuit however prior to electro electro current uh, prior to electron theory current flowed from the positive terminal to the negative of the circuit before we could understand about the electron theory we have to know that it was understood that it was understood that the always the current flows from positive to negative the this convention is so firm established that it is still in use so it was so firmly established or it was so firmly believed by the scientific people so that it was understood that and the same convention is still followed that the current flows from positive to negative and this is called as conventional current direction of conventional current unit of current 
वन एम्पियर ऑफ करंट इज सेव टू फ्लो थ्रू अ वायर इफ एट एनी क्रॉस सेक्शन वन कुलूप ऑफ चार्ज फ्लोज इन वन सेकेंड सो वन एम्पियर करेंट इज दैट अमाउंट ऑफ करेंट वैन वन कुलूप ऑफ चार्ज फ्लोज फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव फ्रॉम वन एम्पियर करेंट फ्लोज वन कुलूम ऑफ वन कुलूम ऑफ चार्ज फ्लोज फ्लो इन वन सेकेंड इन एनी क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ द बॉडी इफ वन कुलूम ऑफ चार्ज फ्लोज देन इट इज इन वन सेकेंड एंड इज कॉल्ड एज वन एम्पियर टाइप्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट कैन बी क्लासीफाइड टू थ्री टाइप्स सो वंस वी हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट इलेक्ट्रिक करेंट इज द रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज अ स्टडी करेंट देर आर थ्री टाइप्स स्टडी करेंट वेरिंग करेंट एंड अल्टरनेटिंग करेंट स्टडी करेंट इज दैट वेर द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द करेंट डज नॉट चेंज विथ टाइम और इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द करेंट इज ऑलवेज कॉन्स्टेंट वेरिंग करेंट मैन द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ करेंट चेंजेस विथ टाइम इट इज कॉल्ड वेरिंग करेंट सो वेन द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द करेंट चेंजेस फ्रिक्वेंटली और इट चेंजेस पीरियोडिकली एनी थिंग इट इज कॉल्ड एज वेरिंग करेंट अल्टरनेटिंग करेंट एंड अल्टरनेटिंग करेंट इज वन हुज मैग्नीट्यूड चेंजेस कंटिन्यूसली विथ टाइम एंड डायरेक्शन चेंजेस पीरियोडिकली सो alternating current is that in which magnitude uh, changes continuously with time and direction and changes uh, changes directly okay electric and magnetic circuits so in the unit 1 we will understand or we will discuss upon the mainly main points that is emf electromotive force current as we have understood about one ampere current the same current principle we will understand potential difference that is the voltage power that is the product of voltage and current and energy what is electrical energy then we we'll understand about magnetomotive force magnetic force permeability hysteresis loop what is so in the magnetic circuits as we all know electric whenever there is flow of current through the electrode uh, electro or copper rod at that point of time magnetic force is generated or magnetic field is generated in perpendicular direction to the 90 degree to the flow of direction of flow of current that is called as elect electromagnetism so whenever there is electric field in the copper electrode copper electrode or copper rod we have magnetic force involved and that is called as magnetomotive force magnetic force so in that we have to understood the uh, principles of permeability hysteresis loop reluctance leakage factor and bh curve then we will understand about analysis between electric and magnetic circuits what is a electric circuit and magnetic circuit then we will understand about electric electromagnetic induction so because of rate of change in flux with or Uh, with the rate of change of flux or with the uh, movement of copper rod in the flux um, copper rod in the magnetic field we have the electromagnetic induction or current is generated in the copper electrode that we will understand in the electromagnetic induction faraday's law of electromagnetic induction lenz law dynamically induced emf as i have told you whenever current flows through a copper uh, wire the uh, magnetic field is produced in per 90 degree perpendicular to the perpendicular to the flow of direction of current so that is called as lenz law dynamically induced in emf statically induced statistically statistically induced emf ac circuits unit 2 we will understand about ac circuits in this chapter we will discuss upon cycle frequency periodic time amplitude angular velocity rms value average value form factor peak factor impedance so all these parameters all uh, which we measure we can understand in the ac circuits phase angle and power factor 
so what is a phase angle what is the magnitude what is the power factor that we will understand in the ac circuits where the elements are resistance inductance and capacitance mathematical and phasor representation of alternating emf and current voltage and current representation in star and delta connections so we can connect ac circuits in star and delta representations so how is the voltage and current representation in these two type of circuits we will understand then we will understand ac in resistors inductors and capacitors and combinations of these so whenever ac is applied we have three load or three uh, resistances that is called as resistors inductors and capacitors then in unit 3 we will understand about transformer and single phase induction motors so we will understand about the general construction of transformer what is a transformer how it is constructed how it is made principal and different types of transformers there are different types of transformers step up step down different types of transformers we will understand emf equation and transformer ratio of transformers auto transformers so we will understand about emf equation what will be the emf equation what is the primary voltage secondary voltage depending upon the number of turns and uh, what is a core what is a winding all these we will understand about in the transformers then we will understand about the auto transformer auto transformers are those wherein number of primary windings and numbers of secondary windings are equal so that input voltage is equal to output voltage so we will understand what is an auto transformer and its applications construction of and working of single phase ac motor or induction motor so what is a ac motor or induction motor we will understand then we will understand types of ac motors and their applications in the unit 4 you will understand about electronic component and signals that is voltage and current sources signal waveforms that is sinusoidal triangular and square so what are the voltage and current sources we will understand then we will understand about the types of signals like sinusoidal signals transformers triangular signals and square signals then we will understand about time domain and frequency domain representations so any parameter varying with respect to time and any other parameter varying with respect to frequency how it is represented that is we can we understand amplitude phase frequency and wavelength what is an amplitude what is a phase what is a frequency what is a wavelength of a particular uh, radiation or particular uh, signal that we will understand integrated circuits and analog and digital in that integrated circuits we will understand what is a integrated circuit and in that we will understand about analog and digital integrated circuits diodes and applications so in this unit 5 we will understand about pn junction okay we will understand about pn junction zener diode rectifiers filters and light emitting diodes or leds so what is a diode and what are the pn junctions what are the zener diode what is a re how rectifier is built or how rectifier is connected so that we get uh, ac to dc filters what what are filters and in that we will understand about different types of filters and light emitting diodes in the unit 6 we will understand about bipolar junction transistors so what is a bipolar junction transistor transistor as switch and amplifier input and output characteristics so transistor consists of three terminals collector emitter and base so we will understand about what is a bipolar junction transistor which is act as a switch also and also as a amplifier we can make as a bipolar junction transistor as a switch or also it is acts as a amplifier so in that we will understand about input and output characteristics of common emitter common base and common collector mode of transistors then we will understand about the operating regions of a bipolar junction transistor 
so what is the uh, region where we can operate a bipolar junction transistor in a common emitter common base and common collector mode we'll understand then we'll understand about the transistor parameters what are the parameters of a transistor so these uh, are the important uh, points we are going to cover in this subject that is basic electrical and electronics engineering so we'll understand one by one in every in the lectures uh, in the further lectures so we'll understand what is a basic electrical engineering what is electronics and difference between electrical and electronics engineering and why some particular equipment is called as electrical equipment and some particular equipment is called as electronic equipment that we'll understand Ele so here i would like to brief you that electrical equipments are those equipments when electrons flows through a conductor and electronic equipments are those when it flows through gases or from silicon or germanium uh, based uh, based uh, materials okay so this is all about the first lecture we have understood what is uh, electrical energy and in that we have also revised uh, summarized upon what are the points we are going to cover in this subject so with this i conclude this first lecture thank you